From 13 ABC, Conklin and Company, with 13 ABC Action News anchor Lee Conklin. First, with what's happening behind the headlines, and take three, our panel of political analysts. Morning, everybody. Welcome into another edition of Conklin and Company. Today on the program, a tribute to the troops through dance, sort of like uh, Dancing with the Stars. It is Dancing with the Stars, military style. We'll tell you about a huge event coming up in a couple of weeks uh, at the Martin Luther King Plaza. Take three today. We'll check in with the head of our 13 ABC Washington Bureau, Jacqueline Policastro, on the push for Portman for VP, the scandals, the Secret Service, the General Service Administration, race for U.S. Senate here in Ohio. Josh Mandel's campaign really ramping things up with a new ad this week. But first, what's going on with that huge parcel of vacant land that used to be home to Toledo Jeep? Uh, more than meets the eye. And right now, what does meet the eye? Not too pretty. Here to talk about it is Matt Sapara, a Chief Operating Officer of the Toledo Lucas County Port Authority. Great to have you on again, Matt. Thanks, Lee. Okay, so we, we take a look at that video and people mm -hmm. drive by, mm -hmm. thousands of people every day, and say, what is going on with the uh, you know, mm -hmm. old Jeep Parkway property? But you secure a lot of money this week. And that was big news because uh, everybody wants to see that piece of land come back to life in some way, shape, or form. Certainly, there's a lot going on on the site. Um, you know, originally we divided up in uh, the phases for the project. We started with remediation of the property, basically going in and taking care of all the environmental issues out there. Um, and there, there were a number of them. We're through that phase now. We've uh, begun working on the demolition of the foundations out there so we can begin putting buildings up out there. And, and these foundations are really something that um, they're just unbelievable. Um, you know, you think about the foundations in your basement. Mm -hmm. These are really more um, obviously industrial in nature. Right. Um, six feet thick, eight to ten feet uh, deep into the ground. They're just incredible. It's been a, just a huge chore to get those out of the ground. Um, and we're about halfway through that process now. But this money we received uh, earlier in the week, $2.8 million from the state of Ohio's Job Ready Site Program, that's money that we're actually going to be um, using to implement the next phase, and that is to prepare the site for an actual vertical construction for a building out there. The money that we're going to be using is going to be for our roadway improvements, for our rail siding out there, and to do some more filling and grading. Um, so I think the public, as they drive by, they'll definitely see a lot more activity out there in yeah. terms of preparation for a new building. And think about the Marina District, the infrastructure that had to be done mm -hmm. uh, to, to get that land ready for what we hope is development this mm -hmm. summer. But uh, same situation at G Parkway, $2.8 million, this grant. Mm -hmm. But there was other money before. Was that, was that a lot of that environmental work uh, money that had to be used? It was a combination of yeah. things, um, including the $2.8 million. We received about $9 million dollars from federal, state, and local sources. And it's, um, you know, it's really humbling to be quite honest with you because I think that the, uh, the Port Authority has the right formula um, for s finding success with these grant dollars that are quite honestly going away. Um, and that formula is simply that the community has a common voice in the significance of the project. And the Port Authority never goes and just asks for money. We always go and um, we, c we just basically communicate that it's always our first dollar in the community's first dollar in, and we show basically what the return on investment is for these uh, these agencies. Uh, what is the return on investment then? So talk about sure. that. I remember uh, Paul Toth holding a news conference mm -hmm. uh, some months ago. Very, Paul's not given to hyperbole and a lot of excitement, but you can tell he was jazzed about this, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So tell us what the ultimate goal is for this for this parcel sure. of land. Well, we want to take advantage of the opportunity that's existing out there right now, and in, we think one of the largest market segment segments is um, with the announcement of the investment Chrysler's making in the facility, right. is we have a lot of tier one auto suppliers in our, in our market, and they're looking for inventory. They're looking for buildings that can cite their business model. And one of the challenges we face here in Northwest Ohio is that we have a tremendous amount of vacant real estate assets that probably were more home in the 50s and 60s than they are in today. Um, people that want to come into uh, you know, our community, they want relatively high ceilings, they want energy efficient mm -hmm. buildings, they want certain size of square footage so they can house their business. And we don't have a lot of that. And the goal of Jeep, um, our development on Jeep Parkway is to provide that inventory so that these businesses can flourish here. Mm -hmm. I, I can think of another piece of land that's uh, down on Reynolds Road, but uh, Port Authority doesn't uh, lay claim to that land, no, unfortunately. No, we don't. So. Yeah. Would you like to? <laughs> Huh? The, the Port Authority, st we're always open to help our <laughs> colleagues in the city. Uh, certainly, we welcome the opportunity to yeah. talk about yeah, that. We're talking about the Southwick, uh, Southwick site there. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's uh, ultimately, though, the timetable. People are impatient, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you, you get tired of driving by uh, totally. a vacant piece of property. So, so what is the timetable mm -hmm. on getting Jeep Parkway developed and, and going yeah, vertical? Sure. Well, sticking with the theme of trying to cater to Tier 1 suppliers, mm -hmm. the Port Authority has to be in a position by the end of first quarter of 2013 to have a building up and ready to go. Um, we really have to start... This time next year. Exactly. We really have to start construction this summer. Um, and to that end, we begin implementing this $2.8 million. Um, at the beginning of May, the Port Authority is going to be out with a request for 
for proposals, seeking a, uh, a private developer that we're going to partnership. Um, really a true public-private relationship where they can share in the reward and the risk. Um, and we think there's a unique opportunity here to do that. Do you go nationally, you go internationally? I mean, Absolutely. Where you can find we, that development? The answer is yes, we yeah. do. We, we think we've got a very unique um, pro piece of property here with a very unique market that developers can come in and, and can market to. All right, well, let's uh, veer from there. Let's head west out to uh, near where the airport is. Mm -hmm. Uh, MBX Solutions, so what was, or at least the, the business that was Bax Global, mm -hmm. and before that Burlington, mm -hmm. uh, which is now BX Solutions. So mm -hmm. you've gone away from the air component mm -hmm. uh, of what that is, and, and tell us how it's going after, it's been up and running for how many months now? Uh, BX Solutions actually began their operations, I think, in the beginning of December, and it's, you know, it really is a true success story. Um, you know, when Bax decided to close their North American operations, um, there was a lot of concern, obviously, throughout the community mainly due to the fact that other communities for, you know, faced with the same situation in, in uh, Wilmington and Fort Wayne, you know, they have large facilities that are still vacant. Um, you know, when BX Solutions approached the Port Authority about... Like DHL you know, down in Wilmington? DHL, or? absolutely, yeah. and uh, Kitty Hawk in, uh, in Fort Wayne. Um, you know, when they approached us, you know, we, we obviously wanted to fill the building back up. We wanted to create that economic impact and keep as many of those people employed there as we possibly could. But BX has just done an incredible job. Um, you know, it really is a great success story. I mean, this is basically a core of people that worked for um, BAX mm -hmm. previously, and they basically decided when BAX decided to close their North American operations that they could run the business just as well, if not better, than BAX um, did. And they have. They've continued to hire people. They have created a great amount of investment in, out there uh, in conjunction with the Port Authority and the state of Ohio. It really is a great success story. Now, without a lot of hullabaloo, really, there mm -hmm. was the initial the initial opening, mm -hmm. uh, but much hasn't been talked about since, but you say it's going great. It is going well. Um, they're going to get ready to start hiring more people again in the next uh, few weeks here because, once again, they continue to expand their business model. It's just a gr great success story, and I think it really goes to the character of the people here in Northwest mm -hmm. Ohio. This group of people, you know, they saw this opportunity. They rose to the occasion. They had uh, community-minded community people uh, financially back them, the Port Authority back them. And it just, it, it's an incredible story. Well, invested here, no no question about it. Absolutely. We love to hear success stories. Okay, so far so good at BX. Best mm -hmm. of luck with the Port Authority and uh, and the uh, the old Jeep Parkway property. Thank Everybody you. wants to see that uh, come back to life. Absolutely. All right, Matt Sapara, Toledo Lucas Thank County you. Port Authority. Come back in just a minute and uh, we'll salute some of our military heroes, tell you about a major event coming up in just a couple of weeks.